everyone. Happy Friday. I hope everyone is having a wonderful week. My name is Riley and I'm the Customer Success Manager here at Rate Capital. Before I jump in, I do just want to let everyone know that our webinar host today is experiencing some global outage. So if at any point this webinar is uh, closed out or you can't hear me or anything like that, just know that I will record this entire session and send everybody the recording. If not, if it closes out in just a couple minutes, then I will uh, reschedule this event. But again, we're just having our, our host is having some issues this morning uh, into this afternoon. So uh, just again, I will either record this entire webinar and send it over to everybody who's on the list or we will reschedule. But hopefully we can get through it. It looks like it's all good now. So with that being said, welcome to our Ride Capital Academy Back to Basics Refresher Part 3. Uh, the goal of this webinar today is to provide you with an in-depth overview of best practices and provide you with insights into our different planning modules. So I just want to point out that this is a webinar series. So back in early April, we hosted part one, and all of our recordings are on our YouTube channel as well as in our help center. And I just want to give a brief overview of what we reviewed on session one and session two. So in part one, we were going over optimizing action items. We went really into the weeds on client settings. We were using, we were also going over using data visuals to help elevate your client presentations. And then we also went over leveraging Right Capital's essential resources. And then on a part two of the Right Capital Academy, Back to Basics, we were reviewing five essential tips for effective planning. We went over optimizing your workflows using our templates. We went over some key features in the advisor portal. And then we also went over advisor analytics and how you can use those to boost the client experience. And then on today's agenda, we will be reviewing our models tab in the advisor portal. I wanna go over an in-depth analysis on our glide path. And then we'll go over creation and comparison of multiple plans. And then we'll be going over an overview of the retirement analysis action items, as well as the strategies there. So I'm going to pivot over to my Right Capital login, and then we'll get started in the models tab. But I hope everyone is having a wonderful week. It's Friday, and it's a stormy weather here, but uh, hopefully it's a nice weather this weekend. So here I am, I'm just logged into my Right Capital portal here. So this is where my clients are listed. I'm currently on the clients tab. And if I wanna go all the way up to the very top, I'm just clicking into models. So we have different models in Right Capital. We have our model portfolios. We have our glide path options. We have scenarios. We have vesting schedule for those stock options. And then we have a retirement spending tab. So let's start off here in our model portfolio. So this is a great way to easily assign an asset allocation when you're entering an investment account for a client, but it's, an also, it's also a very great tool when showing the client the comparison between their current allocation versus a target model portfolio. And in our advisor portal, this is where you can model out and build out those portfolios. So when everybody's login, you will always have a number one preservation model, all the way up to number seven, most aggressive. So those are our default. They're automatically pre-populated into your login. And those just go over different equity fixed income splits. And those are really driven on your rate of return. So number one, preservation all the way up through most aggressive are there by default. And then you can always add additional model portfolios. You can title them whatever you'd like. And then you'll see that on a global level throughout your client plans. Before I jump into the logistics here, I do want to point out that on the left hand side of the page, right below that blue ad portfolio, I can click into that help center link and this will bring me directly into our help center article that will give you a detailed explanation of uh, kind of the behind the scenes on our preservation up to most aggressive, as well as how to create and update your own model portfolios. But again, the main uses for model portfolios are one in the client's profile net worth section. It's an easy way to assign an asset allocation. So for example, if the client has net, not yet started to save into a 401k, you can easily add that account and then say it will follow a moderate or growth or aggressive portfolio. Uh, if they don't have specific tickers or holdings that you wanna enter, or if you don't know uh, their customized asset allocation yet. 
uh, but very easy in the net worth to assign that. We'll go over that in a little bit in, in, in just a second after we go through the models tab. Uh, and then the second really big use case for model portfolios are in is in the investment tab uh, when you're looking at comparing the client's current allocation worth versus one of these model portfolios. So I can add as many portfolios as I'd like to this uh, tab. So all I have to do is click into this blue add portfolio. And then on the right hand side of my screen, you'll see it say new portfolio. And there's a little pen and paper icon right to the right of that. I can just click into that and then I can title this whatever I'd like. So I can title it client specific. Again, this is on a global level, but if I wanted to uh, easily say that this is a 60 40 split with a specific holding i can easily make that adjustment so again whatever is easy uh, easiest to see when you're in the client plan so i'm just going to say this is 60 40 and then press save and then to actually save the new name you just have to click that blue checkbox saves the new new title then moving forward in every client plan you will see this as an available portfolio so we have two ways to map out the model portfolio. The first one is our asset class based option. So that would be just scrolling down and clicking into each individual asset class and then assigning the percentage. So all of this just needs to add up to 100% and then I can press save. So if I wanted to adjust the US equity portion of this model portfolio, I just have to click into it. Let's just say I wanted to do 10% uh, here and then I wanted to adjust maybe real estate. Uh, so I can easily make that adjustment. And then at the very bottom, if you cannot press the save button, that means it has not yet equaled 100%. And then if I went back and made that 16 again, it will allow me to save because it's now that 100%. So that's the first way to assign that asset allocation. And then if I click on right to the right of model type, I can click on that drop down and I can switch it over to holdings based. And this is a very popular option among advisors because it's now easy to enter a specific ticker symbol directly imported over from Morningstar to build out that model portfolio. So if you wanna create one on target date funds or just specific holdings, it makes it very easy to do that here. So if I switch over that model, model type over to holdings, it will just ask me for a confirmation that I will, use, I will lose the work that I just did on that asset class based a model type. I just click to confirm and then I just have to click edit holdings. Then this note will pop up and at the very bottom left I just have to click on this blue add holding. So now I can click into that security symbol field. Again all of our ticker symbols are directly imported over from Morningstar so you'll see the potential ticker symbols based on what you're entering. And then for example if I wanted to add GM I just click on GM and then I want to just put the allocation percentage. So again, it's very popular to do specific target date funds or just specific uh, holdings, but it can make it very easy. Again, this will update on a daily basis. So uh, that model portfolio will always be up to date. So I just want to run through that one more time. It's kind of a two-step process to switch over to modeling out the holdings. So I'm just going to completely start over here on the left-hand side of my page. I just have to click add portfolio. Again, I can always title this whatever I'd like. And then where it says model type right above US equities, I'm just clicking on that asset class based drop down and then I'm switching it over to holdings based. It will ask me a quick disclaimer just saying everything that I was just doing in the asset class space will then be overridden with the holdings based, just confirming that. And then the last step to get into that screen is clicking on edit holdings the add or remove holdings window will pop up. And then at the very bottom left, I'm just clicking that blue add holding. Clicking into symbol, and again, target date fund, specific holdings, the allocation just needs to add up to 100%. So very helpful here. Again, this is on a global level, so you will see this in every client plan. And I'm sorry, I'm receiving a notification that my audio may be impacted right now. So I'm just gonna switch over to a different option. Again, I'm so sorry if it's a uh, bad connection today, they are experiencing some problems uh, with the hosting site. So that is our model portfolio. Last thing I wanna point out is that number one through seven cannot be adjusted, meaning you can't override the name of it. That's just our automatic defaults, but you can always make adjustments to any portfolio that you add. 
So for example, uh, I'm just clicking on my riskalyzed portfolio. Obviously we know that adjusted to nitrogen, but uh, throw back to the riskalyzed, uh, but I can always make adjustments here. And then I can always make adjustments to the allocation as well. And I do want to point out, if you do have an integration with nitrogen, you can connect that in our integrations tab, and then that will pull directly all of the portfolios that you've built out in nitrogen over here. Awesome. So that is our model portfolio. Up next, I want to jump into our models glide. So I will be going over the glide path in my specific client plan in a lot more detail, but I just want to point out that this is where you can build out different glide paths. So everybody will have a default glide path. This was created to show a client moving very slowly, uh, more conservative over time. So we can see in our default glide path, years to retirement, equity, fin fixed income and cash. And if I slowly scroll down, approaching retirement, we can see that the equity portion moves over to fixed income and fixed income moving over to cash. So it's very, very slowly moving more conservative over time. So our glide path is a great way to show the client moving from a specific allocation to a different target allocation. Uh, so we have different glide path options in Right Capital. So you can build and get very granular with building out your own glide path here. Or we have another option where you can model out pre-retirement -alloc pre allocation versus post-retirement allocation. So I will be going over that in a lot more detail within the client plan. We have a great visual to show the client. I think it easily explains what the, the glide path is doing. But the bottom line is to show the client moving from where they currently are, either more conservative or aggressive over time. And then again, I always like to plug that this Help Center article right below, add a new glide path. We'll go really into the weeds. There's some really good examples on what the glide path is doing, uh, but it's how fast are we getting to that, that uh, allocation that we want the client to be in. So that is the default glide path. And then I have built out just two examples, 10 year, 20 year, you can build them out uh, for specific clients. But again, anything here is on that global level. So that's the glide path. Again, we'll go into that in a lot more detail as a, a kind of a case study or case example. And now I'm going to head over to the models scenarios tab. So this is a great way to show a client a comparison of where they currently are or if something were to happen. So the best place to see this in our in the client's right capital profile is in their retirement analysis comparisons graph. And again, when we're in that client plan, I'll show you exactly where I'm referring to. Uh, but this is a great way to show the client is something happening versus what they where they currently are. So it's a, it's a way to introduce risk or show a level of volatility uh, over time. So we have some pre-built model scenarios added. That's our bad decade followed by slow growth. That model was designed to show a bad decade of volatile performance, early 2000s, followed by equity growth of 2%, bond growth of 1%, and then a cash growth of 0.25%. Uh, we reference the S&P 500 and Barclay aggregate bond uh, for the equity and bond assumptions. So there's some underlying assumptions in there, but again, that's mo directly modeled to show a bad decade of volatile performance from the early 2000s. So we can see there's a, a, an immediate drop in that equity portion, and then if I scroll down, there's another drop in year nine and 10. And then we can assume that baseline growth of 2%, 1%, and 0.25%. The next pre-built strategy is the Fed adverse scenario followed by modest growth. So that was four years of financial institution stress test, uh, looking at their equity reserves, followed by a drop in equity, and then returning back to a flat 4%. So fixed income drops 2%, cash drops 0.5%, and we used returns uh, that financial institutions are required to use for solvency testing. So again, we can see each and every year the changes, immediate drop year one and two, and then uh, increased three, four, and then returns to the baseline. And again, I'll just read that description one more time. Uh, four years of financial institution stress test on their equity reserve, followed by a drop in equity to a flat 4%. Fixed income will drop to 2% and cash to 0.5. 
we used returns that financial institutions are required to use for solvency testing. Then strong growth scenario is a popular one. That's 10 years of positive growth followed by flat equity returns of 8%, bond returns of 4%, and cash returns of 1%. So you can always see that detailed out here. And then I can just follow it for each year. I can see the change in equity, fixed income, and cash over time. And then number four, I like to call the ultimate stress test. This is no returns. So it's a great visual to show the clients that what would your plan look like if you were to not receive any return in the future? Again, ultimate stress test, uh, but can be a great comparison for the client. And then you can always add your own scenario. So you can click on that blue add scenario. You can title it whatever you'd like, and then you have complete control on the percentage change in equity fixed income in cash. So number one through four, always everybody will see that when they log into Right Capital, and then you can always add your own. So up next is our models vesting. So this is going over stock options, and you can completely customize what that vesting schedule look like. So you will have four, three, and five year vesting automatically, and then you can see I've also added uh, some different vesting schedules. This is on a global level, so whenever I'm in the client's profile net worth and I'm modeling out a stock option, I will see this in the dropdown. But again, that's just clicking that blue ad vesting, and then I can scroll all the way down, I can title it to whatever I'd like, and then just map out year one, two, three, four, five, depending on how that stock option vesting schedule is set up. So that is the vesting schedule. And then the last thing in our models tab is one of our most popular options, and that's our retirement spending strategies. So we have five pre-built retirement spending strategies. And I like to explain this as uh, the ability to show control, of, more control over expenses uh, in retirement. So let's say that the client plan I'm working on, they have $5,000 of retirement monthly expenses. By default, we will always have it set to inflation adjusted. That means we're just taking that $5,000 a year and applying your general inflation. So in the cash flows each and every year, you just see that growing by general inflation. So that's our default, but you can introduce different spending strategies to show more control over those expenses. So for example, a very popular one is our retirement spending stages which allow me to put three different stages into that retirement monthly expense. So for example, from retirement to age 74, the client will keep that $5,000 adjusted for inflation. The second stage from age 75 to 84, we reduce that 10%, or we reduce the $5,000 by 10%. And then the third stage is from 85 to the end of the plan, we reduce that even more by 5%. So you have a little more control instead of just showing $5,000 factored in for inflation for the entire planning projection. So I'm just going to quickly review each and every one of our strategies. So again, inflation adjusted is just impacting uh, the expense you have already entered and just factoring in general inflation. Retirement spending smile. So this method is called the Blanchett spending smile and was created by David Blanchett. Research has shown that expenses within retirement decline slowly and steadily over time. The other consideration is healthcare costs. So those generally increase over time. So if you were imagining this on a graph, we would take that $5,000 of retirement monthly expenses. And once they retire, they slowly, gradually decrease their expenses. But as healthcare costs are kicking in, then that smile comes up on that graph. So it's a slow decline until health costs kick in. And then if you were matching in a graph, the graph would then tick upwards, creating a smile. So you can completely customize that smile and factor it in. What do you want us to do? Inflation minus a specific percentage. But the general idea here is when somebody retires, they slowly reduce that retirement monthly expense. And then when retirement healthcare costs kick in, it slowly increases. And then I already briefly went over the spending stages, but again, just a great way to show three individual stages and what's happening to those expenses over time. Up next is guardrails. This is another very popular option. So this is going to say, or this is going to look at the client's initial withdrawal rate in the projection. And it's going to say, 
our capital preservation rule, so before age 80, if the withdrawal rate is 20% greater than that initial withdrawal rate, automatically reduce spending by 10%. So that can automatically look at the client's initial withdrawal rate in the planning projection and say before a specific age, if the withdrawal rate is X percentage greater than that initial withdrawal rate, reduce the spending by 10%. And then we have our prosperity rule, which means before age 80, if the withdrawal rate is 20% lower than that initial withdrawal rate, increase spending by X percentage. So it's really looking at that initial withdrawal rate in the plan. If the client is spending too much, we will automatically pull back. If they're not spending enough based on that withdrawal rate, then we will increase spending. So very helpful at the very bottom of this entry. It will also allow you to control that initial withdrawal rate. So let's say that the client in the first year of the planning projection is moving and they're taking a very large withdrawal from a specific account, that can skew the client's initial withdrawal rate. So we've added the ability to override that to input a specific percentage that you'd like. So a very common use case is if they have a large withdrawal because they are relocating or making a specific purchase, then you can automatically control that uh, initial withdrawal rate. And that is on a global level. So you just have to come into this specific strategy that you're building out and then override that to a specific percentage. So that is a very popular one. I would say retirement stages and guardrails are, are what we see as being the most popular. Uh, but then there is also a floor and ceiling option, which can be very helpful. This strategy allows for retirement spending to fluctuate with market performance. So spending would be reduced in years of down markets, but will not be lower than a, spe a specified floor, uh, while spending would be increased in years of strong markets, but no higher than that specific ceiling. So this is just our default 15% and 20% for that ceiling, but again, you can always add your own. And if I wanted to add my own spending strategy, I just click on that blue add spending strategy, and then it will allow me to select what strategy type I'd like to use. So if I wanted to build a custom smile, stage, guardrail, or floor or ceiling, I can easily map that out and then I can title it whatever I'd like. Another really nice use case, and I'll show you this visual it, when we're actually in the retirement analysis, but a really great thing with the retirement spending strategies is you can show the client a comparison between two strategies. So if I wanted to compare the true difference between inflation adjusted and a spending stage, I can use our comparisons chart to do that. Uh, but we'll get really into the weeds on that as a visual in the retirement analysis. But here's where you can build out all of this retirement spending strategies on that global level. So that is the retirement spending. And up next, I'm going to jump back over to my clients tab, and then I'm going to use a specific client plan today to review the glide path settings and all of the options we have here. So let me just get into my client's plan. I'm just using a popular fan favorite today, Adam Sandler. So I'm just clicking open client. I just want to get into his client plan. And then the first place I want to start off is just showing you where the glide path information is most useful and where you can show the client a visual of what's really happening if they are on a glide path. So when I'm loaded into the client plan, I'm just going to go all the way up to the very top and click on the investment tab. So if I'm clicking into investment. The glide path tab will be called our allocation path. So right next to asset allocation, I can click into allocation path. And right now my current setting is on a pre and post retirement allocation. So on the right-hand side of the page, I can say the starting allocation for the client. Let's say I wanted them to be at that most aggressive. And then when the client retires, I want them to move to a more balanced model portfolio. But as you can see in this dropdown, it mimics what it, it's showing exactly what I have entered in my advisor portal. So I can see that it's a global level. And then here, the graph will update to show a great visual of what's happening with the X fixed income and cash over time. So I can hover each over each year of the projection and then I can see when the client retires here, we were at 90% equity, dropped down to 50% equity and moved more into fixed income and cash. So this is the first glide path option. 
And if I wanted to update the glide path to get very granular with a glide path that I manually created in the advisor portal, I just have to change the client settings. So if I go all the way up to the very top right of my screen, I'm just clicking into the gear icon because I want to get into those client specific settings. So if I click into settings, and now if I'm on the methodology tab on the left hand side of the page, I just want to click into the allocation method setting. So right now I have pre and post retirement allocation selected. If I did not want to use a glide path, I can select same years for all allocation and then I'm just running their current allocation or whatever model portfolio I change that to. And then if I wanted to enable glide path, that's where I can get that granular approach. So at the very bottom under glide or right below that I should say, I'll see glide path used for current allocation and then I can select from the drop down which glide path I'd like to use. So once the glide path is selected, we want to determine how quickly that allocation shifts from their current allocation to that glide path allocation. And that's what we do by changing the grading schedule. So again, that's determining how quickly the allocation shifts from the current allocation to the glide path. So this duration can be anywhere from one year to 40 years. So just an example, if the grading schedule is 10 years, in year two of the projection, the allocation will be nine tenths of their selected allocation and one tenth of that glide path allocation. So after 10 years, the allocation will be 100% in that glide path allocation. So I just want to read that example one more time. I know uh, it's great to see it as a visual, but it's also just the underlining kind of logic behind it. So the glide path determines how quickly the allocation shifts from the current allocation to the glide path allocation. So in this example, if the grading schedule is 10 years, in year two of the projection, the allocation will be nine tenths of their current allocation and one tenth of the glide path allocation. So after 10 years, the allocation will be in 100% that new glide path. We have detailed examples in our help center as well, but it's just uh, how close or how long is it taking them to get to the glide path that I'd like them to be on. So that is where we can enable that a glide path. Again, enabling glide path is that detailed glide path that you've built out where it shows years to retirement, year over year, you're controlling the change in that equity, fixed income and cash. And then our other most popular option is selecting a pre and post retirement allocation. So it's allowing me to say pre allocation, you're here. When you retire, you move to a different model portfolio. So if I have that enable glide path selected, I'm just going to select that 10 year grading. And then I'm just going to scroll down and press save. And then I'm just going to go back to that investment tab up at the very top next to dashboard. And then I'm going to click into the allocation path. So that's going to show here on my alloc asset allocation over time. I can see that we're slowly moving into that more conservative approach based on our default glide path. So this is where advisors will spend a majority of their time during the presentation explaining this glide path, just because the client can see the visual of the change in equity fixed income in cash over time. So two options on the glide path, default glide path or building out your own where you have complete control over year over year, or if you wanted to do a pre and post retirement allocation. So please let me know if you have any questions on that. I, it, it's a very utilized tab. It's very popular. Uh, not every client is going to stay in the same allocation for the rest of their life. So it's a great, a great way to show that slow or fast shift, either more conservative or even aggressive. So you don't have to just do it going more uh, aggressive to conservative. It could be on the flip side, just depending on that client. Awesome. So that's our investment allocation path, also known as our glide path. And then I'm going to hop over to our retirement tab and I'm just going to go into the analysis. So today I want to focus on creating and comparing multiple plans, as well as giving you an overview of the retirement analysis action items, because we can build out a lot of proposals. Pretty much every client question can be addressed right here in our retirement analysis. So it's really a great to become more familiar with everything that you can do here. So the first thing is that 
you are not limited to one proposed plan. You can build out as many proposals as you'd like. And on the right hand side of the screen next to current plan, you'll always see a little pen and paper icon that you can click into. So if I click into it, it will say add or remove plans. And then here I can add as many plans as I'd like. So for example, under my current and proposed plan, I have added a scenario where my clients are interested in moving to Florida. So I can create one proposal that only addresses moving to Florida. So I can easily compare either their proposed or current plan to that one variable of them actually relocating to Florida. If I wanted to add a plan, I just click on the very bottom left, add new plan. And then it will always say new plan. You just have to click into it and then title it whatever you'd like. So let's say I had one moving to Florida and then I had another moving to Florida with the purchase price being 600,000. So I can even get very granular on the specific proposals that I'm building. So I can do moving to Florida and then I can put 650,000. And then all I have to do is press that blue checkbox that actually saves the title. And then I just have to press okay. And now on the left-hand side of my page where I see proposed plan, I just have to click on that drop down, and then I will see all of the plans that I have created. So if I want to switch it over to moving to Florida for 650,000, that will copy their current plan. And then in the action items down below, it will allow you to make any adjustments. I'm just going to switch back to that proposal, but again, very easy to add or remove those plans. You can do retiring plans, different social security filing ages so you can get very granular with the proposals that you're building out and then you have complete flexibility to include those in your client deliverables as well as clicking into each proposed plan in different elements of right capital so i can see the cash flows for that proposal i can see roth conversions for those proposals so you can get very granular in all of the information you're building out so that's the first thing that's the creation of multiple plans and then I'm just clicking into the action items down below. So our action items is, is really what's driving this module. In real time, you can always click into things and make adjustments. Again, you can address pretty much every client question on a, on a what if scenario that they may have. So for example, in my proposed column on the left, I proposed Adam retiring at 70 versus 67. And then I can easily press that refresh button to see that outcome. Uh, but what's really nice in the action items are the strategies on the right hand side of the page. So strategies are going to allow you to easily make adjustments to your asset allocation, your social security filing age. So I just want to review all of those strategies and just kind of expand on what they're actually doing. So on the right hand side of the page, I can see my asset allocation. So this is where I can bring in those model portfolios in the client's proposed plan to really show them the difference. So right now in their current plan, we're using their current allocation. And then now I wanna introduce that most aggressive model portfolio in that proposal. So this is where I can tie that in and really show the client the comparison. And then right below that, I can also explore those glide path options. So in this dropdown, I will always see all of the glide path uh, details that I've built out. And then if I wanted to compare a default versus a 10 year grading, I can easily see that comparison as well. Right below that is our social security option. So I can click on that current strategy. That's what's, what we've modeled in their profile income section, but then I have complete control to show the client their optimal strategy, filing as early as possible, full retirement age, age 70, retirement. And then our most popular option is clicking into customized because then I can show and adjust specific ages in real time. So lots of flexibility with social security. I can easily click into it, see what happens if it's at 67, 68, 70, and refresh to see that outcome. So right below Adam and Jackie's social security options, we also have our debt strategy. So in our dashboard debt module, you can build out different debt proposals. So if you wanna show the client the impact of paying down their debt highest to lowest interest rate or highest to lowest balance, you can show them that impact on the, the dashboard debt tab. You can also build out proposals where you show additional cash flows being redirected into the debt. And then our debt tab is also very popular for showing refinancing options. So I can build out all of the proposals in the dashboard debt 
and then I can come back to the retirement analysis action items here and I can bring in that proposal. So it will feed over all of the changes I've made in that standalone module directly into the action items. So now if I select this debt proposal, I'm bringing in all of that information that I've built out. And at the very top, I'm just referring to dashboard up at the very top. And then in that subcategory, you'll see the debt module. So now if I go back down to those action items, that's our debt proposal. Up next is our distribution strategy. So in our tax distribution tab, also known as our Roth conversion analysis, I can build out the client's Roth proposal and then I can bring it back into this proposed plan. So our distribution strategy is bringing over all the work I do in our tax distributions tab. I built out a Roth conversion that I'm happy with and then I wanna show the client the comparison here. So it just allows me again to bring in a standalone module right back into the client's proposed plan. So that's distribution. And then I'm sure you're noticing a trend here. Our education strategy allows you to build out an education proposal in our education module. And then it allows you to bring it right back in to show the client that comparison. And then the last thing here is our retirement spending strategies. So this is where you can show that client the comparison of being in one spending strategy versus another. So our most popular kind of comparison here is in their current plan, you're keeping them as inflation adjusted. And then I can click on that drop down and show them the difference if they were to switch over to a new spending strategy. And then I can use the different graphs in this module to show the true comparison of having a little more uh, control over expenses. So I'm just gonna switch over to retirement spending strategies and then I can easily see that difference. So those are the strategies. If I click at the very bottom right, we have an edit button. And I do wanna point out that we also have additional strategies that you can add. Some are just not relevant to specific client plans, uh, but we do have an annuity allocation strategy that you can use. We also have a student loan strategy. So again, if you're building out student loan proposals and, and payback information in our dashboard student loan tab, you can bring that into the retirement analysis. And then we also have an income strategy so income strategy is looking at taking an existing investment account and moving that over to an annuity. So if I click into income strategy, I can then model that out. Uh, and the last one is our AUM fee. So you can look at the difference between the AUM. So lots of strategies. Again, if it's not relevant for the client plan, you can uncheck that and remove it. Uh, but the ones I reviewed today are, are the most common. So while we're here in the add or remove action items, I do wanna point out how to kind of optimize that what if proposal. And that's really using the blue add new items at the bottom left of this page. So if I click on add new items, this is allowing me to add anything directly to the proposed plan without impacting the current plan. So a very popular one is relocating. That's a very common conversation can I move to a specific location and with a purchase price of X, Y, Z? So for example, if I wanted to build out that proposal, I just have to hover over the category. And if I hover over goals, and then in that secondary dropdown under property, I can add a primary home relocation, or maybe they don't wanna relocate, they just wanna purchase a vacation home. I can add all of that information here. So if I click into primary home relocation, I can map out all of the details and it's only impacting my client's proposed plan. So I can title it whatever I'd like, map out all of the purchase information, all of the financing information, and then at the very bottom, I can also control what are they doing with that current property? So are they selling it, converting it to a vacation or rental property? And then I can press save. So just for the sake of time, I've, I've built this out before the presentation. So under primary home relocation, I have a moving to Florida for 450 and a moving to Florida for 600,000. So I've created two primary home relocation goal cards and you'll see on the right hand column, it will say never. So that means in the current plan, it's never happening. And now in the proposed plan, I can turn the 450 and 600,000 option on or off to do that comparison. So very common for the client to look at different purchase price. So I just have to add multiple entries fill out the details, and then I can easily show the client the comparison. 
So right now, 450 is never happening in the proposed and current plan, and it's only happening in the proposal. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to click into that. But now in moving to Florida for 600,000, I can also control the time frame. So maybe I run this projection and in 2023, it's not optimal for the client. I can click into that calendar year dropdown, select the age, or if I just wanted to change it to a different calendar year, I have the ability to do so. And now I press refresh and now they are moving in 2045. I can easily run that projection and then I'll see that listed here. So that's fine. That's the, the first use case is adding anything to the proposed plan by clicking into that edit field and then add new items. Another very popular add new item is the annuity option. So I can click right above add new items. I'm just selecting annuity. And then here I can show the impact of the client moving a, a selected account into an annuity. So I can title it whatever I'd like, assign the owner, is it happening immediately, a specific calendar year or age. And then all I have to do is select an account that I want to use for the client to fund that annuity purchase. And then the value, so just as an example, let's say moving 150,000 from his 401k into an annuity. And then all I have to do under annuity type is select what annuity he's purchasing. So let's just say it's an index annuity. And then let's say it's also lifetime income. So under uh, distributions, just clicking on that regular withdrawal option and then switching over to lifetime income. So in real time, I can easily model out different annuity purchases. Again, it will be listed in my action items. I can turn them on and off and then just press refresh to see that outcome. So I always like to say in this analysis, in the edit button, you are always using the add new items and you can build out anything that the client is looking to see. You can just hover over the different items, add it, build it out, and then make any adjustments moving forward. And then I also want to point out if I'm just going to add a specific goal, I'm just going to do a wedding just as an example. And then I'm just going to put test wedding. And then I'm just going to press save. And now it gets added in the action items. So on the left hand side of my page, you'll see that test wedding under financial goals right above savings. All I have to do is click into that dollar field. I can make any adjustments, but let's say I wanted to retitle the name of that financial goal. I can just click on test wedding. So then if I click on test wedding, it will then reopen that note and then I can make any adjustments. Uh, so always like to point that out, point that out. You can always click into the name. It will open that entry, make any adjustments, and then you can always press save. So very helpful looking at those strategies as well as building out those proposals either in its own separate plan or if you wanted to build out everything here and the last thing a great indicator on what's changed between the proposed and current plan is anything that's changed or different turns blue uh, so if i'm comparing this and, and really quickly want to see what's different i can see under strategies everything that turned blue is different than their current plan awesome so lots of things you could do here. And the last thing I wanna to cover today are just uh, kind of showcasing some of those visuals to the client and really what's popular when working in those action items. Obviously the probability of success and that green bar of their median ending asset value is extremely important and it's a really great visual, but you can also use the comparison savings and retirement details tab to really show the client some great visuals on the difference. So up first is that comparisons tab. This is going to allow you to show a great comparison of the difference in invested assets between the current and proposed plan. Whenever you see a graph in Right Capital, I always let people know, always look for that little downward arrow to the right of the title, because with most of our graphs, we can always expand to more detail. So where it says scenario analysis, invested assets, I can click on this drop down and then I can expand it to a comparison of the client's net worth, taxes, as well as assets at retirement. So if I'm comparing the client's uh, Roth conversion distribution strategy, this scenario analysis taxes graph is an amazing visual because I can show the, the difference in total taxes for the length of the projection. So this is a great tool. Again, just always be on the lookout for this little downward arrow to the right of all of our graphs. It means you can always expand for more detail. 
So very helpful visuals there. And then right to the right of that title, you'll see it says baseline. So here I can implement those model scenarios into this comparison graph. So in that dropdown, you'll see all of the global entries that you've added. And like I said, the flat 0% return is that ultimate stress test. So as an example, I could easily show the client what will happen if you were to receive a 0% uh, rate of return for the length of your plan. Or I can show them a bad decade followed by slow growth, as well as that comparison. So this bad decade, this baseline is assuming that straight line rate of return. And then I can always implement that kind of level of volatility or risk uh, due to those model scenarios. So up next is that savings tab. Again, this will be great visuals for client savings. Uh, right next to the title, you'll see that little downward arrow. I can click into it. I can show the client current year savings, savings over time, savings rate, and then the most popular option here is looking at total savings and returns for the length of the projection. So total invested assets, total savings, this can be a great uh, kind of value add if you are looking at different proposals into the client's savings. So if you're saying let's pull back on 401k contributions and put some of that into the Roth account, this can be a great kind of overview and great visual uh, if that is a, a, a conversation you're having. And then the last tab is retirement details. Again, this is a great visual. Our income sources of the proposed plan is where are we pulling to go towards your expenses? So this is not capturing all of the other income or all of the social security income coming in. It's what portion of the social security or annuity or other income are we actually using to go towards your expenses? So in this plan on the right hand side, you'll see that they do not run out of money. They have a $0 income shortage and 41.9% of their income is stable. Income is stable is any social security, pension and annuity income. So any social security, pension and annuity income is what's driving that income is stable percentage field. Uh, but this can be a great visual to show where are we actually pulling to go towards your expenses. And then again, clicking on that title, I can look at the withdrawal rate. So this is extremely helpful if you're looking at those different retirement spending strategies, specifically the guardrail. I can see what is their initial withdrawal rate and then what that looks like for the, the remainder of the plan. So that is our withdrawal rate. And then the last one is our retirement spending. And again, if you are doing comparison of the retirement spending strategies, this is the best visual to see, to see the difference. I can see total retirement spending, and then down below in the action items, I can always adjust the strategy that I'm using to see the changes in all of these categories. So super, super helpful information. Again, just using the probability action items, getting all of that information in there, and then using comparison, savings, retirement details, as well as other planning modules to really hit home uh, the difference between the two. Uh, but that's how you create and compare multiple plans and then it's also a great overview of what you can do in those action items and the last thing i want to point out today before going into the q a is you can always put all of this in a deliverable for your clients so at the very top right of my screen next to profile you can click into those three dots which we call our more menu and then right in that secondary drop down you can go into the report section uh, so here I can check off all the relevant modules that I'd like to include. We just recently had a really helpful webinar that goes over different templates that I can create for clients. So for example, if I click on my template dropdown, I can build out basic but plus specific modules, or if I just wanted to run uh, the visuals that I went over in that analysis, I can build that out all right here. Uh, so very helpful. You can put all of the information we went over today in a nice deliverable for the client or if you're presenting in person, you can always click through the modules that way as well. So that wraps up base, Back to Basics Part 3. I hope everybody enjoyed the content. Again, this is a webinar series is going to go really into the weeds on specific topics in Right Capital. And then we're also going to weave in some case studies there just to give you some examples. Uh, for example, on the horizon, we're planning uh, to go really into the weeds on Roth conversions. I know that's a popular topic. Uh, so we're going to build out some really nice case studies, give you some really great examples on how other people are really optimizing that module. So be on the lookout for that. That should be back to basics or just Right Capital Academy uh, kind of case studies that we're launching.